So depending on the, the quality and the, the price range of the dryer is going to depend on the features that it has. When we start at the very kind of low end of the spectrum and in, in price range, you know, we're typically looking at dryers that still have a mechanical timer. You know, we're not going to have any electronic boards. Some of the timer dryers do have a moisture sensor that will give you some type of automatic dry or a sensor dry. But most of the time, the majority of the timer dryers are going to use basically like a temperature sensor to detect if the clothes are dry or not. As we start kind of moving up in quality, uh, when we get away from the timer dryers and we start moving into ones that actually have an electronic control, has buttons, those dryers are going to have a dedicated uh, moisture sensor. They're going to have, uh, that allows this, the sensor options for the dry. Of course, they're going to have a, a main control board that not only sends the power to the motor for the unit to spin, but also it sends half the power that the heating element needs to function rather than the timer, uh, which is just kind of like a manual process in, in which it actually heats up. Aside from that, we start getting into the level of the dryer having the ability to give error codes with some of the sensors and some of the temperature fuses that are inside, you know, based on the temperature change, you know, so they're a lot smarter. So you'll typically run into more issues because they're able to, to detect a lot of things in the more expensive dryers. That's about the main difference between the lower end and the higher end dryers. Every dryer is going to have a door switch that basically tells the unit when the door's closed. It won't function with it open. They're all going to have an, a heating element. You know, of course, your gas dryers are a little different. They have a heating system, which, you know, involves an igniter, a gas valve, the, essentially the same thing that's on an oven. Of course, you've got your motor. You have, they call it an idler pulley. Essentially, it's a tension pulley. So the belt that wraps around the drum of a dryer, it goes across this tension pulley. Like if you look at a belt on a car, and it keeps it nice and tight. So when the motor moves, it moves the belt, which moves the drum of the dryer. There is some other parts inside some of those parts that may go bad. And we can kind of touch on the details uh, as we get into some of the symptoms and, and repairs. Let's see, I do believe that's more or less it. So dryers with an electronic control, the control panel where you actually touch the buttons, that's called the control panel, the interface. There's a few different words for it. That is a separate component from the actual main control board, which the main control board is what, it's like the power center of the dryer to where your interface control is kind of like the, the command center of the dryer that kind of tells the control board uh, what to do. Something basic that can cause some issues uh, in a dryer is even just the feet. <laughs> you know, if they're not adjusted correctly and things are unbalanced or they're adjusted in a way where where it can actually cause some issues, especially in the uh, sensor uh, automatic dry. There is also a blower housing with a blower wheel that is connected to the motor. So as the motor turns, as it spins the belt, as it spins the drum, it also on the other side of the motor is your blower wheel that turns as the motor turns. And this is what basically forces the air over the heating element through your clothes and out the exhaust. So there's some things, if there's an issue with that between noise or, um, you know, some symptoms in drying that that could cause. I think that's it for a dryer.